Let's start by creating a new Xcode project and uh, choose single view app and then next and in product name let's name it uh, stopwatch and next I'm going to save it on desktop click on create okay let me make it full screen okay so first of all let, let's go to storyboard this is where we will um, draw our interface so as you can see we already have one screen right here we can uh, we have a lot of uh, controls that we can drag and drop into the form so I will need a label this is going to be displaying the timer itself I'm gonna first of all type 0, 0.0 and let's uh, change font size to a little bit bigger than this so let's choose 80 points that's big all right you know what I want to change the background color to something like this and I'm gonna change the color to white and yeah that's it Let, let's assign some constraint now we'll assign this constraint uh, and let's put it 32 and we'll make it horizontally aligned in container I want to need two buttons one is for start and stop so first of all we're going to start with start <laughs> and well, we'll have another button and it's going to be reset button so this one will change the color to white as well and this is also to white and um, we will click on start and we'll set constraints so I put uh, 16 make it horizontally aligned in container as well and here again I'm gonna put 16 again add constraint and horizontally aligned in container so here I think that is it now uh, let's start connecting these the interface to the code so to do so we'll go to the bottom right corner right here where you see double circle where it say show the assistance editor so you click on this it will uh, display uh, another panel uh, that has code in it and it's a class view controller which is the code behind this interface that's going to control the interface right here so what we, we want to do here is to connect the components or the controls that we have in this view controller into the code so that we can access it Right. so the first one that we want to link to the code is uh, this label so I'm gonna control and then left click on this and then drag and drop and I'm gonna say timer label uh, timer label so make sure that you choose uh, outlet for a connection and the type is UI label so connect I will also need to access start button so again click on this control drag and then drop and I'm gonna say start stop button so yep okay uh, then we will also uh, need to create two events the event is gonna be for when user click on the start or touch on the start button 
and when you just touch on the reset button as well so to do so we're gonna click control click on start and drag and drop it right here but now we do not choose outlet we choose action right we choose action in the connection and we'll name it uh, start stop did touch and for type make sure that you choose UI button okay connect now you have a function that will be called every time user click on this button or touch on the button yeah whatever Let, let's do the same thing with reset so control click drag I'm gonna say reset did touch and change it to action change type to UI button this is very important right? connect okay now you see that we have two function we can write and we also have access to timer label also start stop button okay now let's start coding uh, for, for stopwatch we want the start button to start count up the uh, the timer label so it's gonna be one two three four five uh, second right so we'll use timer so I'm going to de declare a variable called timer which is of type timer and uh, I will need a variable called is started which will be set to false by default this is to keep track that whether the timer has started or not yet mm, I'm gonna need another variable I'm gonna call it counter uh, this is going to be the data that represent uh, this label right? so whatever the data is the label will display that same thing okay now whenever you click on start or stop the touch the first thing that we're going to need to check is uh, whether it is currently started or not yet right by checking at the variable is started so if it is already started right or not yet let's work on the else part yeah first so if the uh, if the, the, the timer hasn't start yet we're going to start the timer by saying timer equal timer dot schedule timer with in a world score when we choose this function right so there is a time in a wall I'm gonna put 0 0.1 target I'm gonna put self selector this is where you where you put the function that you want to call each time the timer uh, fires right? uh, so I'm gonna create another function I'm gonna say at objc fun update timer label so it's gonna be up to update timer label right uh, in selector we'll say hashtag selector and then in here we'll put the name of the function and use the info there's no need nil repeat true we want it to repeat okay and after the timer start we'll have to change the is started to true right because it, it is started and we'll need to change the start stop button as well I want to change its title to stop for normal state mm -hmm. so that is it and right here let's work on this function so the function update time label is very simple so we have this counter so I'm going to say counter plus equals 0 0.1 and then I will uh, update the label right so I'm gonna say uh, uh, timer 
label dot set dot text equal string of counter we're doing so it's because counter is of type double right so we want to convert it to string and assign it to a text property of time and label okay and now let's run this first uh, we'll see if it's right or we'll get some error on that okay now this is uh, well, it takes a little bit long now let's click on start it's uh, working right oh you see there's problem here and this problem is because of uh, double precision in the uh, computer itself so we need to fix this it it's it there's nothing wrong with our application but the the problem uh, lies in uh, the the way that floating point works so we we can have uh, you can have a way around this by rounding that so i'm going to need to import another one uh, i'm going to import foundation and right here before we convert it into string i'm going to say round uh, counter i'm going to multiply by 10 and i'm going to divide it back by 10. so this is going to give us uh, just uh, one decimal point all the time right there's no nine 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 like uh, you saw p previously so let's work on is started now if it is already started um, we're gonna stop the timer I'm gonna say timer dot invalidate to stop the timer and and then we'll change is started to false and we'll change the start stop button title as well we want to change it back to start because that's already stopped right you want it to change back to start i think that is it now if you run the application again we can start and let's wait a little bit to see if it that the d.9999 still pops up it doesn't seem to pop up anymore right so the fix does work by using round and we'll, we can see the the, la the label change to stop so if you click on stop it stops the timer and the button change back to start start it continue counting stop start stop now let's work on reset button reset's going to change the label back to 0, 0.0 so it's pretty simple right it's pretty simple we're just gonna say counter equals 0, 0.0 and uh, we'll also say uh, what we'll say uh, is started we want to change is started to false as well and if if uh, if uh, user click on reset while the timer is still running which means that the label is uh, stop the, 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 the title of the start stop button is actually stop we want to change it to start right so before i change uh, is started equal fall i'm going to check if it is started which means that if it the timer is currently running we, we're going to we're going to uh invalidate we're going to stop the timer and um we're going to change the start stop button to start again right and uh we will just put it in the site here yeah i think that is it oh I forget we'll, we'll also need to change the uh, timer label 
uh, dot text equal 0, 0.0 right so again we will reset the counter but at the same time we also need to check uh, this one I'm gonna put it up up, up here right we reset the counter we reset the label and we check if to see if it started equal true which means that whether the timer is currently running if it's currently running we stop the timer and we change the start stop button title to start and we'll change the variable is started to false now let's run that again so I click on start so if I click on stop click on reset it's going to reset the timer click on start again if it is currently running and I click on reset it's going what it, what it needs to do is it reset the timer and at the same time change stops to start right yeah we click on start again it works so that is it I'm gonna make a lot more video about uh, the kind of project like this the projects for a beginner for those of you who are beginners in Swift and iOS if you are interested please subscribe and like the video and also comment if you have any questions I will try to answer all your comments below Thank you very much.